EarSketch Lesson 1, Intro to EarSketch. You've already created an account, and now you're in EarSketch, and you're ready to start your first lesson. We're gonna, you're here in the editor, and we're going to click to create a new script. You can click right here, or we can come over here to on the left-hand side. Under the Content Manager, click on Scripts, and then you see a button here for New Script. So that's what we're going to do. Click on New Script. You have to give it a name, so we're going to call it Lesson 1. And I'm just, I already have lesson one, so I'm calling it my new lesson one, but you'll call yours lesson one. And this comment section comes up first, and you're going to fill in the script name. This is lesson one. And for the author, you're going to type your name. You should do this for every time you create a new script. And for the description, we're going to call this intro to Python. Or intro, let's call it intro to ear sketch. So we started a new script. We filled in the comment section at the top. We're not going to change this line 8 ever. You're always going to keep that. And the same thing with 10 and 11 and 15. So you should always have all the things through line 11. And you should always end with finish. It's not going to be line 15 always, but you need that the finish should always be the last command in your script. Now I'm on slide 13 and it gives you some code to type in. Now you can type in the code or if you're on the slide deck, you can just copy this by highlighting it. Do a copy, control C or right mouse click copy. We're going to come over to your sketch. It says starting on uh, line 13. So I'm going to come here to line 13. It's my cursor there and just do a paste. So if finishes move down, that's fine. It doesn't matter what line finishes on as long as it is last. And I've got all my other code here. Now I'm going to click Run. If you come up to the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a green button that says Run. And this executes the code. And it should come back. You see down here is this console at the bottom of your screen. And you see where it says Running Script, and then Script Ran Successfully. If you have any kind of errors, it'll show up down there and give you an idea of what you need to go and change. Now, you notice that the song did not play. This just ran the code, and it generated these tracks up here. And so after you run the code, then you need to play the music. So we see two different sets of controls. So now I'm going to click Play. So isn't that cool? You just created a song, a sound clip. I'm going to come back to the instructions. And the next slides talk to you about running the code and also the console at the bottom and also playing your music. And then it's going to point out a couple of things on your um, an ear sketch over here on the left hand side. I've got something called an API. And this is all the different commands in EarSketch. So if you, there's something that you want to learn more about, you want to learn more about Fit Media, I can click here. It's going to give you some more information. If I want to learn what is this init thing or any of the other commands, if I want to learn about MakeBeat. So this is just a good resource for you if you want to learn some more things. And on the right hand side, there's some curriculum. So there's several chapters and references and optional things. So it's a lot here where you can do some things on your own if you'd like. And then on the next slide, it's going to talk to you about adding in a print statement. So in our console at the bottom, right now it only said running script and script runs accessibly, but we can add in some print statements. We've done some print. Well, we didn't really do print in Code Sculptor, but it's an option that's always available to you. So we're going to add in a print statement on line 19. I'm going to come back here to my code. Well, it has to be above 19, doesn't it? So it could be on line 17. I might press enter and do it right here on line 18. I'm going to type the word print and then in parentheses and in quotation marks, I'm going to put my name, but you would actually type your name is a coder. I'm going to click run again and I want you to pay attention down here at the bottom where it is the console. And did you see that? Um, my name is a coder came up before it finished uh, saying the script ran successfully. And then I can play the music again. I didn't change the music. So the only thing that I 
add it in there with something to show up on the console, which is a good debugging tool. Okay, now you're ready to share your file. So this is the only way that the teacher can really check your work and make sure that you're not having any issues. So we're going to click on this share and then find the link. So you'll see next to run is share. So this is in my code editor. If you click on the black share button, this pop-up will show. And I'm going to let others view. I'm not going to change anything. I, I just need this pop-up. And here in the middle, you'll see a clipboard. So I'm going to click on the clipboard. And that's copying this long link. So it's doing the same thing as highlighting it and then doing a copy. So I could do that, or I could just click on this clipboard. I'm going to go to my assignment, and on slide 7, it asks me for a link to my lesson. So I'm going to click there, do a paste, and then the teacher can check your work and make sure that your song is just as wonderful as we know it will be. Then you're ready to go to your reflection, and then you can turn in the assignment.